You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. In the name of the most powerful, Jesus Christ, may the Spirit of the Most High surround you, my dear listener, that are facing a living hell, you that are facing depression, fear, anguish, sadness, you that find yourself living a life under a disgrace. And in this very moment, God's grace, the Most High, may come upon you to remove this depression, to remove this spirit of anguish and sadness. And in Jesus' name, whether you are in a prison, in a hospital, in a nursing home, wherever you may be, whether in the field or in the city, be reached by the power of the Most High, and that He may surround your life and transform your situation. And you who believe, you say Amen. And thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. I would like right now to affirm with a deep thought for you to understand and to have in this understanding the fact that this week, this last few weeks or days, we have registered two pastors, two pastors, two pastors two pastors of the Assembly of God that killed themselves. They killed themselves by throat. And I received this news before my very eyes. One of them, he was just 28 years old. He was married. And the other pastor, he was also married. And the two of them killed themselves, took their lives just because of depression. Of depression. Depression took them to commit suicide. And now, you, my dear listener, you may say, but, but how come a pastor who preaches God's word to commit suicide, to kill themselves? You know, we had spoken about the pastor who was in the U.S. who killed himself. So we know that when a person commits suicide, it's because they have been oppressed by a spirit of a demon. But the question is, Bishop, how? How can a pastor be oppressed? How can a pastor be possessed by an evil spirit to take such action? I want to let you know, my dear listener, that I do not in any way to criticize. I actually say this with sadness because we believe that all those who are living in this world may, may commit mistakes, may do actions against God's kingdom, but not two men or two people 
that were preaching the gospel, that preached the word. So these people, they committed suicide, that, as is said on the news, due to depression, but they were married, apparently very well married, but how could they have committed suicide? Because they were not free, certainly they were not free themselves, because they were not free themselves, they were not delivered, as we have many, many people inside of the churches, not just the church, but the churches that lives in this depression. And you can verify this. Depression happens because is lacking faith. Where there is no faith, living faith, where there is no intelligent faith, the intelligent faith, So then a person is hit hard by the spirit of this world. And this I have absolute no doubt about it. Because we, we expect, we expect and we, we even understand when a person of this world commits suicide. But we don't understand how a person that is in God's kingdom, preacher of God's word, to commit such acts. We do not expect this. This is like, this is, this is a reproach to our faith. But you know, the reality is, my dear listener, this takes place because majority of the people that have prophesied faith in Jesus, they have sustained this faith through an emotion, through an emotional faith. Because It's a natural faith. And a natural faith, an emotional faith, is when a person is converted because of a, a beautiful song. They heard a beautiful song in the church. So surrender to Jesus in that moment. And they cry. And they pray. So then they think that that emotion, that that feeling that they are having that moment, is God's power. Is God's spirit. And it has nothing to do with faith because the faith, the intelligent faith, despises emotion. And it has nothing to do with your feelings. I am tired of, of saying here on the altar, preaching the word of God, but I don't feel Jesus. I don't see Jesus. I can't touch Jesus. In no way. I am doing this because I believe that He is here that he has promised. He said, I am with you all the days of your life until the end of time. So if Jesus is with us every day until the end of time, and even more, he said, wherever there is two or more reunited, united in my name, I will be there with them. So I have the certainty of God's presence without heavy feelings. Because I believe in God's word. I believe in his promise. And I assume this faith. If I am making a service, a meeting, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I believe that he is in this meeting. Because he promised. Not because I deserve. But because he promised. So I am certain that he's there. And this is an intelligent faith that has nothing to do with feelings. Nothing to do with emotions. You may even give or notice when you are in God's presence and you can feel, you feel something different. You feel something glorious, heavenly, but it's not something constant. It's not going to stay there. And what happens many times, dear listeners, what truly happens is that the emotional faith, it evolves a person's heart in a way that they are convicted of something that is based in the heart, and the heart betrays. It's just like love. You want to no notice something? When a person gets married, they marry 
because of love, the feeling of love. They get married because of a feeling of love deep inside towards somebody else. But after they get married, what happens? After the honeymoon, they, they end their marriage simply the fact of, I was betrayed, I, I, I thought it was going to be something, but now it's this, I don't want anymore. Then they, uh, they ask for divorce and marry again, and then marry again, and keep, keep on getting married. So, what is this? Love that is involved with emotion. And this kind of love is, is betrayal, is corrupt, because it's from a heart that is corrupt. And many times, naturally, actually, majority of the times, people, they mix faith in God's word with this kind of feeling. So they bring feelings of the heart that is corrupt, and they base their lives upon God's word. But look, feelings, feelings of faith, they don't exist. It does not exist. It's not real and it's not true. It makes within you, the, it brings up about that emotion, but because there's no root, no foundation, it dies. It dies out. So, tragedy takes place because of that. So, truly speaking, when a person, they have a faith that is founded, that is based upon God's word, it doesn't matter the battles, the difficulties. It doesn't matter nothing that comes their way because they remain firm and unshakable because of the situation, especially in regards to depression, especially in regards to depression, because depression is a spirit, is an evil spirit, is an evil spirit, and this spirit will work in person's mind, works in the person's mind, and fortifies its own ideas, it's not worth, you can't, life is hard, life is this, life is that, don't say that Jesus is life because it's not true, it convinces you of everything that is bad, or you, there is no cure, you take medication but you don't feel good, meaning it oppresses, you live a life that is filled of failures, filled of sadness, filled of conflicts within you. So this spirit works 24-7, taking people to give up in faith. My dear, my dear friends, just the fact of the spirit of depression to be inside of a person is because they are not free. They are not free. So you who are listening to me right now, don't cry. Don't cry right now. Don't shed any tears right now. Don't be emotional right now or start crying because of these two servants that died. Don't, don't cry their death. We have to look forward and to take as an example their example. You who are depressed, if you find yourself that have been believing in God and you are depressed, you need to be free. You need to be free. You need to be delivered from this depression. I never had depression. I found, I went through difficult moments in life, moments that were critical, moments that were cruel. I went through hell. Literally, I went through hell. And I'm here till today. I overcame because I believed and I believe that my Lord has not rejected me. And He has not rejected me. He confirmed His promise. I am with you all the days of your life. All the days of your life. So, when we are based upon God's Word, when we are rooted in His Word, so then we act and obey and we direct, inspired by this word. And whatever, whatever happens, we affirm 
because the Spirit of God is God's Spirit. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the Word. And it confirms His presence in us. So there is a renewal, a revival, because He will not allow that one of His servants, a true servant, may commit suicide. No way. No way. Or do you think the Holy Spirit was aside? Do you think the Holy Spirit was not there with them? I do not know. I know, I know one thing. That the spirit of depression is a demon. is a demonic force that kills people. Just like it kills the unbelievers. That the, the, the unbelievers, they, they kill those who are of God and they are not. So, you who are listening to me and you find yourself depressed. So then, come, come urgently to receive deliverance at the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. Every Friday, we have a special work against hell, against witchcraft, black magic, against all kinds of evil forces, the spirit of depression, the spirits of doubt, the spirit of suicidal thoughts, the spirit of fear, the spirit that acts there, that destroys marriages, the spirit that are involving people's lives and taking them into this type of action of suicide. So you who want to be free, doesn't matter who you are. What happens is that you, for you, there is a solution. There is a special work of deliverance for you, and you don't need to pay anything. You don't even need to identify yourself. Come to the service. Come to the services on Fridays at any universal church of the kingdom of God, and you will see God's power removing you from this situation, from the devil's Claus. He said, Jesus says, I came to bring you life and life more abundant. So, how can it be that a person find an abundant life to want to kill themselves? Of course not. It has no logic. It does not make sense at all. So, I want to tell you that we are, yes, we are deeply, you know, we feel deeply for these two men and young of them, 28 years of age, no, 28 years old, he was still young, he was like a boy, eh? I wish I could be at my age of 28 years of old and be able to continue, I would be very happy if I could do it, but God, God, my dear listener, he is the same, he did not change, his way. You know, I was, I, I placed a testimony, a sad morning of a lady who went in various churches and she confesses, saying, I prayed, I prayed on my knees one whole night, I went on the mountain, I fasted, I, I went to many churches. I let go of all the clothing that I used to dress, you know, jewelry. She did what religion in the church was demanding from her to do, and nothing happened. And she says, I, you know what, I don't want to know about Jesus, I'm going to hell anyway, so I don't care about my life. And she has surrendered completely to hell. So, my dear listener, if you want to see her sad money, go on Facebook. Go to Facebook there and you'll find her sad story. And her sad story, living and true. But we have also a very powerful testimony, a very powerful testimony of a gentleman that he was in the deep pit. He was in the deep pit. And I'm going to place his testimony for you to listen to it. Very powerful that God has done in his life. Well, when I was growing up as a kid, my mom and my dad, they divorced. My dad was in prison. My mom found another man. And so 
That's when my life took a turn for the worst. My mom and dad weren't around. I was on my own. That's when I first started using meth. You know, that's what turned to the gangs. I got involved with the, you know, kids from school. And so that's when it just went all bad. I was seeking refuge in the wrong people. <laughs> when I hit rock bottom, I, uh, I had just gotten out of prison and uh, I had nothing, you know, I had nothing to come out to. Like, I had nowhere to go. That time when I did hit rock bottom, like I just went into a room and I just screamed real loud and just broke down, you know, cried and for hours and hours. That's when I had met my wife, actually. Her cousin was my best friend at the time, so I used to sell drugs to him. And she was also addicted to the same thing. So when we met, we started doing the drugs together. During that time, I just, things started to happen to me that never happened before. Like, I started to black out. I couldn't remember certain things. We had separated. Luckily, her aunt told her first, hey, you know, let's go to this church. Well, I want to change in my life, too, because she just changed. You could see the difference in her. So I started to apply it. So I got to the church, and I talked to the pastor at the time. I asked him to free me from everything, though, not just, you know, the situation that we're going through, but the situation with the addiction and all that. And that day is when, like, I just knew that, you know, like that's it, I was done, and I haven't went back since. Three years down the line, here I am. So, you know, I I'm, I'm, don't do meth no more. I'm clean off of the addiction, and my life's moving forward now. It, there's hope, you know, don't give up. No matter what you're going through, no matter what struggles you're going through, it, it's a fight, it's gonna be a battle. It's gonna be an uphill battle. You know, you can't just give in, you have to fight. If you want change, you have to ask God to change, but you have to fight for you. Where I'm at now, like, I'm married. I got a beautiful wife, I got beautiful kids, stepkids who love me, and you know, it's just, from where I was to where I'm at now, I'm blessed, I'm very blessed. The contents of tithing begins when one recognizes that everything on earth was created by God. Nature, the animals, men's intelligence, everything made with precision and perfection. All those who hear and practice God's word reap good fruits of obedience. And the teachings about the first fruit go beyond financial conquests and material things. Returning the first fruits enables us to build a relationship with God. To be a faithful tither makes us live in God's holiness, reverence, and to fear the Creator, but above all, have a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit. Make a test, practice, base your life in obedience to God's word and begin reaping fruits of a faithful tither.
I was very rebellious. I suffered uh, abuse, having boyfriends, um, stealing. My life before I came to the Universal Church was very hard, very depressing. I saw my mom the morning, and then she's like, you're not gonna see me for a long time. And my life changed drastically. I suffered abuse from uh, some of my family members, especially, you know, sexual abuse. I was very rebellious, staying out late, having boyfriends, stealing. I was 16, so it was funny. I was at work, and um, my mom just walked into the store where I worked. I was so happy because she never told me that she was going to come back for us. The moment had finally came for us to reunite. However, my happiness was short-lived um, because my parents eventually decided that after 25 plus years that they, you know, no longer wanted to be a family again. Uh, at one point, I started hanging out with someone. I met him maybe at a party. I did not know that he was a drug dealer. You know, we went to the clubs one night, was having a good time. He got into an altercation with someone. And on our way home, that person followed us and opened fire in our car. And I got shot in my arm, my right arm. And as I was walking aimlessly, I had no destination. You know, I just walked past the church. A pastor was outside, you know, he spoke with me, you know, invited me to an event they were having that Friday night. It was a Friday. I was so desperate, so, so desperate. And, you know, I went. And here I was a couple seconds before thinking about taking my own life. It's as if, like, God just sent him right there at that moment to save me. I could see my life gradually changing from every time I would, you know, attend the church. The relationship with my mom, my dad, um, I actually started, forgave them for leaving me behind. I started valuing myself more. I started not really having the urge to have more than one boyfriend. Um, right now, in this present moment, I feel great, I feel free, I feel revived. My life will only get better. I'm happy, like I'm so happy, I feel free. And I have the love of God. Faith and intelligence go together. Although faith sounds crazy to this world, it's intelligent because it makes us know that we can be happy. Faith also keeps us from accepting a life of defeat and allows us to fight to conquer a life of victory and success. If nothing is going according to plan, it's time for you to use your intelligence and faith to bring to existence the desires of your heart. The Universal Church, a place of faith to change your life.
because Jesus gave his all. But what happened after you get older, you kind of, you know, stray away and then, you know, living your life. My biggest problem maybe was anger and um, impatientness and um, selfishness and self-centered, that kind of, you know, problem. A few months ago, my brother passed away. And that was really devastated to me because he was my oldest brother. He was only 59, and we were very close, and he died suddenly. And I was angry. I was, I'm, I was very angry. I was angry with the world. I was angry with God. And I mean, I was just withdrawn. I was, I, I, I was very torn and, you know, just empty. And then you start questioning yourself, I mean, why is this happening? Why God allow, you know, certain things, you know, to happen? Why, you know, we have to suffer so much? That at that time, our family was going through um, a little crisis because my sister was, um, wasn't feeling well. She was sick. She was back home in the islands. 
and then they called me and told me, you know, what was going on. So I said, you know, I said, bring, come to America, you know, in that way, so we can, you know, really find out, you know, what's going on. She did came, and then we went to the emergency room, and after we did from all the, you know, the tests and the sonogram, ultrasound, what, you know, the, they um, diagnosed her with um, advanced cervical cancer. And then, listening to the television, that's when I came about upon the Universal Church, and I called the 1-800 number. And after calling, they were very kind, and so I have to make that effort and that sacrifice, and that was to get back into the church. And then, you know, and, and, and that's what I did. But coming back to the church and, you know, join my um, chain of prayer. And then I seen, you know, things that used to bother me, it's, it's just minor because, you know, I don't really, you know, get that upset and, you know, anger and frustrated. You know, I kind of like, you know, enjoy life more and, and, and be more patient and understand it. And as from today, my sister is cancer free. I'm really, really happy. And, and not even that is that um, it makes such a, a change in my life that my other sister that's here, she started coming to the church. And then I said, so I, since I found so much peace, you know, attending the church, I said, you know what, let me just invite her. And then she did, and she's very grateful that I did. And she's very happy. And so our, our life is, you know, more at ease now. So all that, you know, really play a great, you know, part in my life with the church because I don't know, you know, how I would have made it if I didn't really, you know, decide to go back and really pray and trust God. I've only come to hear about your power Time and time again I've served you more Not knowing who you are Though I hear so much about him To me he's still unknown This God has torn down walls of stone Parted waters of the sea Though I cannot find a purpose If I praise you with my lips When my life does not show meaning Does not show him what I feel I know time has never changed The greatness of your power God, I know how great you are And I've come to know you more I need to know you more Transform my life forever My eyes, they long to see The truth behind your power I've heard enough of you Materialize yourself in me Oh God Those who know you, Lord, will always find their way in night or day. I need to know you more, transform my life forever. My eyes, they long to see the truth behind your power. I've heard enough of you. Materialize yourself in me, oh God ah, Who does not know you, Lord May weaken in their struggle But those who know you Fight and live through Under your protection Those who know you, Lord Will always find a way in night or day
A father awaits for bread and fish. A disciple is a fisherman. A follower fights for growth. A disciple fights to reproduce. A follower surrenders part of their goods. A disciple gives up all their life. A follower loves freedom. A disciple enjoys serving and sacrifice. A follower is worth because they add. A disciple because they multiply. A follower is conditioned by circumstances. A disciple uses it to exercise their faith. A follower is valuable. A disciple is indispensable. Universal Church of the Kingdom of God. I know that your eyes are always watching over me. And your ears are always eager to hear my prayer, even if I may cry. I know that you are by my side When you are near me I'm never lonely Just as promised You never change God of Abraham God of promise, you swore by yourself to change my life. I know your word is true, for this I trust in you. Lord, make your words be real in me. I know that you're right. Are always watching over me And your ears Are always eager to hear my prayer Even if I may cry I know 